In this video, we're going to complete our implementation of the iterator method. So as you can see, this method returns an iterator object. This iterator is actually an interface declared in the java.util package. So here on the documentation, you can see the four methods declared in this interface. These two methods over here have a default implementation, so we don't have to worry about them. The only two methods that we have to implement are has next and next, which you saw in the last video. So now we should declare a new class that implements the iterator interface. So back to our generic list, we're going to implement this iterator as a private nested class inside this generator list class. You will see why in a second. So after the iterator method, we declare a private class called list iterator. This class should implement the iterator interface, which is generic. So iterator of t. Now this t that we have here is the same t that we used when declaring our generic list. So if the client of this class, let's say in our main method, we create a new generic list of string, this type parameter is going to be a string, and we're going to use the same type parameter over here because we're going to iterate over a list of strings. So that is why I don't want to hard code a type over here, like string or integer. I want to use the same type parameter that we have on the top, okay? So here's our private class. Now let's implement the iterator interface. So we press Alt and Enter and select Implement Methods. So the two required methods are highlighted. Let's click OK. Now in this class, we want to iterate over a generic list. So we should pass that generic list over here via a constructor. So let's add a constructor, public list iterator. Here we need a parameter of type generic list of t, the same type parameter, we call it list. Now we should store this in a private field in this class. So private generic list of t, we call it list. And here we set this, that list to list. Now, because we have declared this list iterator inside our generic list, here we have access to list.items. So we can see the items array. And this is perfectly fine because this class is part of the implementation of our generic list. So if tomorrow we decide to replace this array with, let's say, an array list, this class is the only place where we have to make changes because this class knows how to iterate over a generic list. So if we replace the items array with an array list, nowhere else in the code, nowhere inside the main method or anywhere else where we have used a generic list, we have to make changes, okay? Now, here's a question. How can we iterate over an array? Well, we need an index variable. Initially, we set it to zero. As long as the index is less than the number of items in the array, we increment it, right? So let's declare a private field of type integer called index. Now, in our has next method, instead of returning false, we're going to return a Boolean expression like this. If index is less than list that count. Then in our next method, instead of returning null, we're going to return list that items of index, and then we'll increment the index. So initially index is zero. When we call the next method, this will return list that items of zero. Now, next time we call this method, index is going to be one. So we'll return the second item in this array. And we're going to do this as long as index is less than the number of items in our list. Okay. So, Pretty simple. We're done implementing our list iterator. Now, back to our iterator method. Instead of returning null, we're going to return a new list iterator. Now, note that here we have another list iterator, which is an interface declared in the java.util package. We don't want this one. We want the list iterator that we declared here. So let's create a new object. And here we should pass our generic list to the constructor of this class. What is that? That is the current object, this. So let's quickly recap. We made our generic list iterable by implementing the iterable interface. And here we return a list iterator. This is an object that knows how to iterate over a generic list. So it has intimate knowledge of the implementation detail of our generic list. If tomorrow we decide to replace this array with an array list or a different data structure, 
this iterator is the only place where we have to modify our code. Now, back to our main class. Let's add a couple of items in this list. Let's add A and then B. Here we can iterate over this list using a for each loop. Take a look. We get A and B. Next, we're going to talk about the collection interface.